Good morning, everybody. This will be a sing-along prelude, so if you would gladly sing with the girls and ladies as we sing our prelude songs, we would love that. This song comes from Psalm 18. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise. I have been saved from my enemies. from Ecclesiastes. He has made everything beautiful in its time.
everybody. Welcome to Lee Street Church. We're glad you're here. If you are visiting, a special welcome to you. There will be refreshments downstairs after this service, so please join us when we are finished. Um, the girls have some treats downstairs for you, so I'm sure you'll want to um, check it out. We've had a great year in Gems and Cadets, and today that's um, one of the things we are celebrating. And so the Gems will participate here for a while. The Cadets will join us in a bit. And uh, as we reflect on a, on a great year, um, we ask you to celebrate with us. Uh, Valeria and Mika will do our call to worship. So let's pass that. Alégrense siempre en el Señor. Insisto, alégrense. Let your gentleness be evolved to, no, evident to all the Lord is near. Our first two songs will come back to back. It is Rejoice in the Lord Always. We'll do that one as a round. Part one on this side, part two on this side. Try to keep you going. And then the second one is This is the Day. That one will just be sung straight through. Finally, brothers and sisters, wherever is true, wherever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is true, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Pongan en práctica lo que de mí han aprendido, recibido y oído, además de lo que han visto en mí, y el Dios de paz estará con ustedes. All right. And now we will sing one of the girls' favorites, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We have motions, um, so follow with those if you can. 
Um, we'll sing it once in English, once in Spanish, and then I'll go back to English and sing it three times faster each time. So try to, um, yeah, we're going to try to beat Geneva. joy it is to be here in this worship service this morning celebrating our gems and cadets and diving once more into one of the books of the Bible today we are in the book of Philippians and so it will be from Philippians we will be greeted this morning Pastor Jordanis primeramente en español okay ya tienen y Jeff Marcus por favor I mean please come up as well I'm getting confused in in one of the many languages that Jeff you stand on the other side of Pastor Jordanis because you're going to be number two there's your microphone. Um, and Kirk's one of the languages that he works in as a missionary. We're going to hear a little bit more about that in just a moment. So we're going to start from Philippians 1-2 in Spanish and Kirk's and then in English. Let's hear God's greeting. Agradecidos a Dios porque estamos en esta mañana en su casa y agarrados también de la promesa de Filipenses 4-13 que dice todo lo puedo en Cristo que me fortalece. Recibamos también el saludo del Señor que dice gracia y paz a vosotros de Dios nuestro Padre y Señor Jesucristo. Amén. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. You have been greeted by the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings in three languages this morning. Use whatever language you prefer to use and greet those around you on this beautiful morning. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Good morning. How are you? Ah, good. How are you? Good morning. Hermana! Bendiciones. Good morning. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. So Good morning. Yeah, it makes my heart happy. Typically, we do five. Good morning. morning. Um, this Good morning. Oh, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Sifar. Hi. How you doing?
All right, here we are with the cadet program, and we have a few verses that we're going to read for you guys as well. So we're going to start with Corwin. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being uni uni united with Christ and any comfort from his love, any common sharing in spirit, any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete. By being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one of mind, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking into your own interests, but of each other to the interest of others. Okay, thank you, Corwin. And now we have Josue, who's going to speak in Spanish. La actitud de ustedes debe ser como la de Cristo Jesús, que encendió por la naturaleza. Dios no consideró el ser igual a Dios como algo a que ofrece. Por la contrario, se rebajó realmente tomando la naturaleza de Dios sirvo y haciendo semente a los seres humanos y la manifestar como hombre y se humilló a sí mismo y se hizo obediente hasta la muerte y muerte de la cruz. All right. So in the cadet program this year, it was a new year for me and uh, lots of different things going on. And uh, we learned about a living for Jesus, as we do every year. Some of the highlights this year were definitely all the campouts that we got to go on. Um, Scott Meekoff's Christmas party was another highlight that we had. Um, and uh, also the, uh, the recent uh, car races uh, that we had at church was, was another highlight for us this year. And uh, we're, we've been happy to uh, have lots of boys come out. We're hoping next year to even grow bigger. And... Anyone out there who'd like to join us as a cadet counselor, let us know, because we're always happy for the help. And now we have uh, Tito to read the last verses. Por eso Dios exaltó hasta lo sumo y lo otorgó el nombre que está sobre todo nombre, para que ante el nombre de Jesús se doble toda rodilla en el cielo y en la tierra y de, debajo de la tierra. Y toda lengua confiese que Jesucristo es el Señor para gloria de Dios Padre. All right, we're going to sing our uh, theme song and everyone can stand and sing along with us. For We're going to sing first in English, then Spanish, and then once again in English, but sing in whichever language you like. They'll both be up on the screen.
Well, we have the blessing this morning. As you heard in one of our languages, we have the blessing of having one of our <coughs> supported missionaries. All right, we've got uh, to the most exciting part of our Sunday morning. No, just kidding. But we're going to have some announcements this morning. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that the kids will love this. Uh, first of all, kids, wait a second. We have young adults night tonight. We have a game night at 6 o'clock, and it's going to be at the gathering room. So all young adults who want to have a game night, board games, right, mm -hmm. and want to Come and spend time in fellowship, playing games, you know, cracking some jokes if you, if you feel funny today. Please join the young adults at the gathering room tonight. We also will have high school group tonight here at 6 o'clock. And for those high schoolers, we have an impossible chat night. So if you want to find out what an impossible chat night is, please show up. And the second thing, IMR in, uh, registrations, it's open. So please tell your parents, tell your grandparents, kids, please register me for IMR. I want to be. It's going to be June 19 through 23rd, I think. So, and if you want to volunteer, please contact uh, Marilyn Van Dyke. She will gladly take you on it, and we need, we need you. We need you for IMR. So those two things. Uh, moving on, let's continue our communication with God. Let's continue going to his presence, uh, and the dwelling in him through prayer. So I invite you to pray with me this morning. Let's bow our heads in prayer. <sighs> Heavenly Father, we're gathering together this morning to give you praise, honor, and glory. It is because of your sacrifice, sacrifice through Jesus Christ, that we can come to you as we are. We come with petitions. We come with worries. We come with heavy loads in our shoulders. But dear Lord, we acknowledge that only you have the power to change, transform, and grant us with what we need according to your perfect will. We thank you, Lord, for every blessing and lesson upon our lives. We thank you for the beauty in the creation, the tulips and butterflies that remind us about your love and your peace and colors but we also thank you for the storm, the wind, the thunder, the rain that remind us about your power and almighty God. It is because of your power that we bring to you those in our congregation who are dealing with illnesses, who are dealing with spiritual welfare, who are dealing with um, mental illnesses, Lord. We ask you to be with those, especially we pray for Amanda. And we ask that you give her healing and strength. And she recovered from a sprained hip muscle, and may she be able to do more and more each day. We pray for Wanda and her ongoing treatments. May you give her the strength and the endurance to fight the battles with cancer. We bring to you Marisol Arevalo and all of the ongoing medical concerns she's dealing with. May you help them find answers and solutions, Lord. We pray for Rosemary Sitma and her struggles to control her diabetes. We pray for Chris as he's recovering from pneumonia. We also pray for, for a neighbor here, Lord, that it's, it's in need of a kidney. We know how hard these things are. We know that there's a long, ways, uh, a long waiting list. But we also know that there's no impossible for you, Lord. We continue to lift high to you, Lord. So many days in the hospital, it's got to be really hard for him and his family. Give them strength, Lord. Give them hope. Give them healing and improvement, especially for Kai. May he feel your love and your presence, even though the circumstances are difficult, but feeling your love and your presence is our only hope. We also want to uh, place in your hands all of our students. These are busy and stressful times for them. Another school year is getting closer to an end. And they're facing final exams. They're also doing lots of sports and activities that demand a lot of their time, their sweat and hard work, but also sometimes that they get distracted, Lord. And we please ask that these students 
Don't put their faith and hope in their own understanding, but they completely rely on you and they can uh, enjoy of your love and wisdom. So we pray for the students to put you in the first place. Señor, te pedimos también por los países donde venimos, donde, donde venimos, donde aún tenemos muchos amigos, familiares, que tú seas con nuestras naciones, Señor, de una manera en que la violencia, la corrupción, los desalojos y la extorsión disminuyan. Sabemos que son señales del fin del mundo y que tendremos que lidiar con ellas hasta que tú regreses, pero te pido, Señor, por aquellos que son maltratados, por pensar diferente. Te pido por aquellos que necesitan alimentos, techo, educación, acceso a la salud, al agua y tantas otras cosas que a veces nosotros tomamos a la ligera. Perdónanos, Señor, cuando no apreciamos lo que tenemos. Te pido también, Señor, por esta nación que nos acogió y que nos da oportunidades. Sabemos que solo tú eres perfecto y que también aquí hay muchos cambios por hacer. Por eso también, Señor, te pido por los Estados Unidos de América. Father, we rest in your promises and your truth, and we hope in your graciously and perfect will. Therefore, we pray all these things in, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.
stairs today. What a blessing, right, to see so many beautiful children and a celebration of our GEMS and Cadet programs. Um, just two of the many things that we at Lee Street are engaged in, in the faith formation of our children and our, our youth. So a big thank you to uh, the cadet leaders and the GEMS leaders for all of the care and love that they've invested in, um, uh, in the young people of the church and of the community around us. Uh, it's such a, such a gift to be around here on Wednesday nights and to see the buzz of activity and uh, the young people that come and are so excited to be here and to see the, the smiles and the hugs of teenagers and adults that are embracing them and being that smile of God's grace. Jeff, it's a blessing. Again, thank you for being here with us. And I'm glad that since Portilio had to try to translate for you, I will be easy. <laughs> Someone talks faster than me. That was amazing. But what a gift your work is with Becky and for allowing us to participate in the last 20-some years of that work and the amazing gift of walking with people in those small groups and doing life with folks across such boundaries of difference. We just uh, celebrate that work and are so thankful to be part of it. And uh, thank you for, for the gift of coming and sharing a little bit with us today uh, of that work. Well, we are in the book of Philippians, and we've been working through a book of the Bible each week, and I make the joke each week about, hey, I got a new favorite book of the Bible. Um, Ephesians is amazing. And it has been so fun to sit um, in this book. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, I had a time of disorientation this week with the texts that, that I yeah, chose to work with at the beginning of the week and then kind of wish I hadn't as the week progressed. And I'll share a little bit about that with you this morning. But uh, what an amazing, amazing book. And we're going to go to the fourth of the four chapters today and allow God's word to come to life for us in this kind of conclusion of the book of Philippians. So I invite you to pray for an openness of your heart that your mind might be ready to receive what God speaks to and through you from his word today. That's the beautiful thing. Sometimes it's so nerve-wracking to, to, to be a preacher and to preach God's word until I remember it's not anything that I'm saying that matters. It's the Holy Spirit's work through my heart as he's communicating to his people from his word. And so let's listen to God's word this morning from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say it. Again and again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. For the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, 
admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. For whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put that into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Well, let me just do a quick little context here so we can enter into, into this part of Paul's letter to the Philippians with a sense of, of what those first readers were engaged in experiencing as he wrote them this letter from jail. Philippi was a Roman colony in ancient Macedonia, and it was filled with, with retired soldiers. It was like we learned in Sunday school this morning, a, a little Rome. It was known for its extreme patriotic nationalism. And so Paul faced, when he was there, a lot of resistance when announcing Jesus as the true king of the world. Because the Roman citizens understood Caesar as their king, their emperor. And after Paul moved on, the followers of Jesus that stayed in Philippi continue to suffer all kinds of resistance and at times severe persecution. But they remained a vibrant community, faithful to the ways of Jesus. So Paul writes them from prison in this letter, thanking them for Epaphroditus who had come to visit him and almost died in the process. He sends this letter back with Epaphroditus saying, Thank you for sending him to me, and there's a whole lot more I want to share with you. Now, I mentioned a little bit of my disorientation this week. I don't know what your experience is with mental health. How much personal experience you have with it, how much it is part of your family's existence, both maybe currently or in the past, how much you've walked with people that have engaged in situations of mental health. But we all know we've come a long way in our world that mental health has often been so stigmatized, right? It's, it's you can have cancer and receive treatment and everybody will pray and engage and, and walk with you. But, but if you have a mental health issue, it's like that stays secret. That stays pushed away. That stays as something unacceptable because you must just not have enough faith if that's a problem you have. It often seems to surface in that way. And I struggle with that because as I read this part of Paul's letter, he says in verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. A command from God. Do not be anxious about anything. And I struggle with that because I know for a lot of people that I know, particularly anxiety, we talked about addictions last week in Pastor Steve's message on Ephesians and talking about God's grace, and that engaged many people uh, either personally or connected to them folks who have gone through areas of addiction. But I wonder about this statement, do not be anxious about anything. And I struggle because, frankly, I know a lot of people for whom that statement, if used as a command to them, would feel really guilty and walk out of this service today feeling that they got clobbered with a hammer because they would like nothing more not to be anxious about everything. But they're swallowed up in anxiety in so many ways during the course of a given week. And I struggle, I'm like, Paul, how can you be so flippant to make a comment like, do not be anxious about about anything. Um, just be more spiritual and you'll be okay. Well, my family has bemoaned, bemoaned the fact that many times that it's hard to live with a pastor preparing a sermon during a given week. When you're preparing a sermon during the week, um, um, it's like you're constantly looking for illustrations or connections or conversations come up. And so, so part of my disorientation yesterday was, was met with 
um, some folks that Marilyn and I had coffee with, and in the middle of that coffee time, I, I started to share about the passage I was struggling with. And this friend grabbed a book. She said, well, maybe you should take a look at this. The Anxiety Opportunity. How worry is the doorway to your best self. Did you hear that title? The Anxiety Opportunity. How worry is the doorway to your best self. I wish I'd had this earlier in the week. I only had yesterday with it. But I began to look through it a little bit. And although I don't, of course, agree with everything that I read in here, but there was parts of this that were so helpful in relieving a little bit of the anxiety I was feeling about this statement by Paul, do not be anxious about anything. As if it's easy in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, simply to present your requests to God. And if you can't do that, then the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will not guard your heart or your mind in Christ Jesus. It will be there for those who don't have anxiety, but if you struggle with it, you won't have that promise. And as I struggled and, 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 and it was challenged by the reality of, of the mental health that we are embracing in the world around us, I, I found some truth in this that, that was helpful in processing through this letter to the Philippians. Anxiety... Curtis Chang writes about in his book, in 2018, 63% of American college students reported overwhelming anxiety. 63% of American college students. And that was in 2018, before the global pandemic, of which everything has increased. Globally, we are told that 28% of there of has been an increase in, in anxiety disorders since the pandemic in the United States, in particular, and around the world. And only 30% of pastors, by a survey, feel at all equipped to help congregants through issues of mental or emotional health. Only 40% of the research that was done here by Curtis Chang, of those afflicted with anxiety, actually seek assistance, and therefore they live in perpetual isolation. It's interesting to see how anxiety is a, is a normal, normal human emotion and part of life. And anxiety disorders often persist over time and generally do not go away on their own. More research shows that there are six major types of anxiety disorders. Phobias, generalized anxiety, panic disorders, social anxiety dis, um, uh, disorders, obsessive compulsive disorders, post-traumatic stress disorder, separation anxiety disorder, and it goes on and on. And remember that the pandemic has exacerbated the struggles in our society that have been so prevalent for so long. Unless you think this message might be for someone else so far, as in, I don't struggle with anxiety, but I'm glad others do, and I'm glad they're here today. I hope they listen well. You ever do that? You hear something, oh, I'm glad so-and-so is here because they need this. God, open their ears and their heart to hear what you have for them today. And we completely forget. Um, I think there's a reason I'm here today and God's word has been opened up. The word in Greek used for this passage is the same one used in the Mary and Martha story in Luke 10. Marimbes, it's this idea of being in pieces, a mind divided, a mind distracted. Mary and Martha, we all know that story. Mary is sitting at the feet of Jesus, and Martha is worried and distracted about all the things that got to get done. And we always demonize Martha. She's the one with Lazarus who gets it, and Mary doesn't. So let's be careful how much we demonize one over the other, right? But in this instance, Martha, Jesus says, is worried and distracted about many things. It's the same word. She's divided over a whole bunch of different things, meaning Jesus is one of the things she's paying attention to. And Jesus says, Mary has chosen the better thing. And it will not be taken from her. Soren Kierkegaard said, purity of heart is to will one thing. And if you're anything like me or those of you who know me, I don't do a real good job of purity of heart willing one thing. I'm a little distracted. 
with all kinds of things I'm passionate about, all kinds of things I want to do, all kinds of emails that need responding to, all kinds of visions that I can't get out of my head. It is crazy at times. And so I look at this passage and I'm like, it's for me. It's for you. And so I want to lift up the two promises that come in this passage and then look real briefly at four things that God encourage us to, encourages us to embrace. The promises are real simple. In verse 7, you will experience the peace of God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Promise number one. Promise number two comes from the end of verse 9. And the God of peace will be with you. Now, we're not saying this. Remember, there's all kinds of forms of anxiety at different levels and there are parts and kinds of anxiety where medical treatment is extremely helpful, where medication has been able to really stabilize people, where psychiatrists and psychologists and professionals in mental health are able to walk with folks and really, really help and guide them. I'm not saying that we diminish those things. I say, yes, that's part of God's provision. But on the other hand as well, much of this is rooted at a spiritual level, and so on the spiritual side of things, Paul tells us how we are to engage, and he makes these two promises for us in what we are able to do. Verse 6, right at the beginning, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition. Number one, seek God in prayer about everything. The invitation to seek God in prayer about everything. Martin Luther once said, pray and let God worry. Pray and let God do the worrying. And of course, God doesn't have to do any worrying because God has everything under control. But where does Paul get this exhortation? Be anxious about nothing. Is it just something that he's on a high horse about? Maybe he doesn't struggle in these areas and so he's going to try to push people down who do? Where does it come from? It comes from Jesus. Listen, Matthew chapter 6. Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, says Jesus. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single day to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that, every, that even Solomon, in all of his splendor, was not dressed like one of these. If this is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and then tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, you sh what shall we eat, or what shall we think, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after all those things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Seek God in prayer about everything. Realizing, realizing that the promise of God is you don't have today the mercy you need for tomorrow, but tomorrow when you need it, you'll have it. And how much of our, our worry at a spiritual level is rooted in concerns about what we can't control tomorrow or next month or next week. We're asking for resources for those things today. And God says, no, that's yesterday's manna. I'll give you what you need when you need it. Today, seek me in prayer for what I've already provided 
for you. The key to fighting anxiety is, is not needing today to look for strength for tomorrow, but relying on God's promise today that what you need tomorrow will be granted to you tomorrow. So we can see God in prayer for everything. We can stop and lift up these things to God in prayer. We can see God in prayer for everything that's on our mind and in our heart. And we talked about this in a variety of different times yesterday and at different occasions, this whole idea of seeking God in prayer around everything. It's the honesty of opening up our hearts. It's the communication about being honest and real with God about what's going on. We call that lament in many cases. Lamenting and, and being honest about what's going on in our hearts. Seeking God in the midst of that pain. Not, not being dismissive or, or pretending it's not real, but lamenting about that reality and being open and honest before God. We call that in our network at Street Psalms, lament as the poetry of truth-telling. It's truth-telling. And we see that all over the Psalms. God is not afraid of our honesty. He loves our honesty. He wants us to come fully seeking him and the reality of where we're at and the reality of the condition of our heart. Seek God in prayer about everything Paul is saying. In the honesty of bringing up exactly that which is on your heart and what you're going through. So see God in prayer about everything, and then secondly, trust God through the prayers with thanksgiving. Look at this second part of verse 6. With thanksgiving, present your requests to God. You know, that bugs me about spiritual formation. We've had a class on spiritual formation on Wednesday. And one thing that bugs me about so many of the prayers that are written and the tools in spiritual formation is they always have this thanksgiving component in them. And frankly, a lot of times we're like, I don't want to be thankful right now. I, I, don't want to, I, I, want, I, I don't want to give up a thanksgiving for something. And it seems like in all these prayers I, I've had and, and engaged in different ways, it's like there's always this about thanksgiving, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. But what's going on there is what Paul is putting his finger on. That it's giving God thanks in advance for the answers to our prayers that are coming. Not the answer necessarily in many cases that we want, but there's always an answer from God. And he knows what's best, and he knows what it is that we need in every situation. Go back to Matthew 6, 26. Are you more valuable than the birds? Clearly you are, and the birds are taken care of. Flowers, the way they dress, we can be so thankful for what it is that God has done in our lives, asking for the strength to be thankful even when we don't feel that. But Paul is saying part of this engaging the reality spiritually in our lives is being prayerful with a spirit of thanksgiving. Instead of worrying about the future, thanking God that he holds the future in his hand. Instead of worrying about what we don't know, thank God for the promises that we do know and Instead of worrying about what we don't have, thanking God for all the grace that we do have and expressing prayers of thanksgiving, worry, anxiety in our hearts at a spiritual level is replaced by faith and by trust. We don't have to worry about those things in that way because we have a great God who is there at all and I love this line from C.S. Lewis in his book, Letters to Malcolm, chiefly on prayer. He says, gratitude exclaims very properly, how good of God to give this to me. One's mind runs back up the sunbeam to the sun. One's mind runs back up the sunbeam, the radiance of sitting in the sun, allowing one's mind to run up that sunbeam to the source of that. To the sun. That's what praying with gratitude and thanksgiving allows us to do, to look up the sunbeam of God's goodness to the sun from where it all comes. So we have this seeking God, 
seeking God in prayer about everything. We have this trusting God through prayers with thanksgiving. And then this verse 8, opening our minds to that which comes from God. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. Sounds like a gem or a cadet model, doesn't it? The, the, the model that one would repeat. Thinking about those things that come from God. Truth, nobleness, rightness, purity, loveliness, admirableness. Things that are excellent and praiseworthy. We're told to think about those things. Paul is saying here that we have a choice in life. We can sit and listen to our hearts or we can learn to talk to our hearts. To sit and listen, or to talk to. David in Psalm 42, this verse, Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. What is David doing? It's David in verse 5 of Psalm 42, and in verse 11 of Psalm 42, twice in the same song, David is talking to his heart. Why are you so downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Help me to put my hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. Paul is, or, um, David here is speaking to his heart, reminding himself and his heart, who he is. It's not speaking to our hearts in some random way. It's speaking to our hearts, reminding our hearts who we are in Jesus, our identity in Christ. Thinking about these things that come from God and, and, and talking to our hearts about who we are in Christ. For worry, it seems, so often comes from listening to our heart. Well, peace comes from talking to our hearts. Not talking in general, but talking in a reminder of who we are in Christ. Anxiety and worry happen when we, we forget that God is on the throne of our hearts and we put our, ourselves there or our circumstances there. And opening our minds to that which comes from God is the key, while shutting our minds to that which is not coming from God. Again, yourself and your own strength, you can't do that. But relying on the Holy Spirit's power and presence, it's like that guy in the Gospel of Mark, I believe, help me with my unbelief. I want to believe, I want to do. Help me, God, because in my own flesh, my own strength, I can't. But in you, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Philippians. All things in Christ who strengthens me. So lastly, after we, we, we seek God in prayer about everything. We trust God through prayers with thanksgiving. We open our minds and our hearts to that which comes from God. And then lastly, at verse 9, we're told to practice the word of God, to put it into practice. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And what? The God of peace will be with you, for the Lord is near. We do what we learn. We apply what we receive. We obey what we hear. We follow what we see. And this morning, we're receiving the word of God from Philippians 4. And we're being invited to put it into practice, into action. Remember that passage from James that we've used so often? Be ye um, uh, doers of the word and not hearers only. So deceiving yourselves, but do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word and does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So Paul says, do what you've seen in me. Doesn't that sound arrogant? What if someone came and said, just do what you see in me. It's 
sounds like he's conceited and full of himself. But 1 Corinthians 11.1 1 helps us understand why Paul can say that. Because he says, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. I have laid my life down for Christ. And so as you follow me, you learn to follow Christ, not because of who I am, but because of who Christ is. Paul's saying, I want so badly for you to follow Christ. If you live like me, you'll, you'll live like Jesus. And then he says in Philippians 3.17, look at the people around who look like Jesus. Follow them, not just me. And so a question to us as we think about this passage is, is, is your life worthy of imitation? If, if other people would follow your life, will they be following Jesus? Student teens, Paul says to Timothy, don't let anyone look down on your youth, but live as an example. As you go to your schools and, and, and go to your sports events and, and sit during your lunch periods, if people follow you, are they learning what it looks like to follow Christ? Single people abandoned to God and his purposes. When folks look at your lives, are they, are they, are they seeing what it means to follow Christ? Husbands, wives, if someone comes and looks at your life as a husband or a wife, are they seeing what it looks like to lift up, to honor your life's partner, your wife or your husband in a way that honors God and shows folks what it looks like to follow Christ. Parents, if your children follow you, will they be then following Jesus? Those around us cannot be what they cannot see. They need to see Jesus in those of us who are following Christ. And that's Paul's invitation. We can't do it within ourselves. But when we seek God in prayer about everything, when we trust God through prayers of thanksgiving, when we open up our minds to that which comes from God and then put into practice that very word of God, we are given those promises that you will experience the peace of God that transcends all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus, and you will know the God of peace. The God of peace will be with you. Not God's gift to you of peace. God himself gives himself to you. That's the promises that are there within this passage of Scripture that so beautifully comes from Paul's heart to us. Today. Verse 5 says, the Lord is near. The Lord is at hand. I am coming for you. The world will pass away. The sorrow will be gone. Our God is coming for us. He has in Christ, and he's coming back someday to bring us to that place of God's eternal presence, which we celebrate now, absent from the body, but we are embraced by the truth of what comes to us on that glorious day when Christ will return and we can be fully embraced in that peace and in that truth. That is very good news. And so I invite you for those to consider after the service, we're going to take the Lord's Supper here in just a minute, but I wonder, do you, do you know this God of peace? Have you, have you been reconciled to God through through faith in Jesus, have you trusted in Jesus? Do you know that today? Do you have that assurance? For there will be prayer servants up here after the service today that would love to pray and engage and talk to you further about what that means, how you can embrace this, this beautiful passage from Philippians 4 and know the God of peace who was promised to you. This whole letter is wrapped around the poem and Philippians 2, verses 6 through 11. And so I want to end with that passage, to end with this beautiful passage that is around which the entire text of Philippians revolves. And that will take us right into the celebration of the Lord's table. This is the gospel laid out that Paul is writing his entire letter around. In Philippians 2, verses 6 through 11, listen sisters and brothers, to the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, from which Paul can write Philippians 4 and exhort us to embrace the fullness of who we have in Christ. Listen, 
Christ, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen and amen. The fullness of gospel truth from which Paul reaches out through the centuries into our hearts today, allowing us not to be anxious about everything, anything, to rejoice. He says it again, rejoice. Even when it feels like we can't do it, the truth of the gospel is we have everything we need in Christ Jesus and his sacrifice for us. We're going we're to take action on that as we come to the Lord's Supper today. And Pastor Jordanis is going to come forward and help me, and the elders are going to come forward. And we are going to put into action responding to the gospel truth of the sacrifice that Christ made for us on the cross of Calvary. Damos gracias al Señor por la invitación que nos hace a participar de su mesa, a la Santa Cena y a reunirnos hermanos y hermanas en esta mañana. Recordamos que somos parte de una gran familia, somos parte del pueblo de Dios, hermanos y hermanas de arriba y de abajo del Ecuador y de todas las zonas de horarios de nuestro mundo. Así que la invitación está hecha, vengan todos a la mesa del Señor. La mesa está preparada. Let's go to prayer. Loving and gracious God, who summons galaxies into being, we give thanks and blessings to you. We bless you for our world. The diversity of our planet and, and your creation amazes us. And, and then there is that part of your creation that's made in your image. We give you thanks for humanity in all of its complexity of color and culture, yet called to oneness through Christ. We bless and thank you for that love made known to us through Jesus, which reassures and reconciles us to you and to one another. Thank you for bringing us together to share this holy meal. Amen. Paula escribió, en la carta a los Corintios, yo recibí del Señor lo que también les he enseñado a ustedes, que el Señor Jesús, la noche que fue traicionado, tomó pan y tomó vino y después de dar gracias, lo partió y dijo, este es el pan que es para mi cuerpo, que por todos ustedes ha sido entregado. Hagan esto siempre en memoria de mí. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Así que la invitación está hecha. Invitamos a todos los que creen en Jesús como su Señor y Salvador y que realmente se han arrepentido de sus pecados y están en comunión con Dios a unirse a nosotros en la mesa del Señor. La invitación está hecha.
take, eat, remember, and believe. The body of Christ is broken for the complete forgiveness of all. Coman, beban, recuerden y crean en la sangre de nuestro Señor Jesucristo fue derramada para el perdón de los pecados completo. Comamos y bebamos de él. God, we praise you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. Jesus has shared his broken body and and shed blood with us so that we can share with him the gift of eternal life. Bless us in this new week as we continue to follow Jesus in everything that we say, do, and think. In his name we pray, and in his name alone. Amen. Amen going to have you stand and receive the blessing, and then the um, gems uh, are going to lead us in a, in a final song of response called We Receive Your Blessing. So receive the blessing of the Lord this morning. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and grant you his perfect. Thank you.